Hi Pisces, it's Raina. I want to welcome you to Astro Weather with Raina, where I look at some of the astrological transits for the immediate future. I haven't decided if I'm going to do this once a week or twice a month. This particular recording will go to the end of September. And I do want to say this is a general look at things astrologically. They, you know, astrology really is precise, and I do consider it a science. And it's based on your time of birth. So obviously, all Pisces are not born at the same time and not born in the same year on the same date. All of those things really matter. So that's why we have the personal natal chart. And that is the only way to really get a good handle on how these energies are affecting you. I do have a variety of readings. You can see them if you click on the link below to take you to my um, website. But otherwise, I still think that these are useful in a general way. And for you, the concentration of energy is in the eighth house which is, it's very interesting. I was kind of thinking before I did this video, like what exactly would a concentration of energy in the eighth house mean? The eighth house is a water house, like your 12th house that you rule. And it's a house that Scorpio built <laughs> or rules. And it deals with sex, death, and other people's money. Okay, so all of those themes may play out for you in this time period because the sun is now there this is in the sign of um libra and the sun is there you have jupiter there until october of 2016 and you have a new moon in this house on the 30th of the month okay now some of the the issues that may transpire may not be off for one of the things that the eighth house represents. Oh, one more thing that the eighth house can represent also is kind of um, the occult. So this is right up your alley. Since you are a very psychic, I would dare say the most psychic of all of the sun signs. And uh, so, the, so the eighth house can relate to astrology, the tarot, um, you know, reincarnation. If any of those things interest you, you may just go on a, on a total um, binge of like reading books on it. I know, um, I'm, I'm a sun in Sagittarius, but I know when I was, I think it was about the age of 19, when I just started getting into this stuff. And I just, I just read everything, everything I could get my hands on. And I remember that period of my life so fondly because... It really led to who I am today, and it was so fun. And it was before the internet, so I would check out books from the library, buy them in a used bookstore. But I was just um, so passionate and thirsty for that knowledge, you know, that wisdom that it provided. And so some of you may be feeling the same way. Jupiter being in this house does point to that kind of um, you know, total over the top, you know, interest in something and expansion. So it might really hit you in that way, influence you in that way, Pisces, but it could be that you benefit from a legacy, you know, like an inheritance when Jupiter is there and it can expand your life. It can change your life. Um, the new moon might point to new, a new, um, beginning in this area. Um, maybe it has to do with intimacy. Maybe you have never really had a relationship that has been that um, committed or maybe some of your relationships relationships have been more shallow. And this is the time when you really get close to somebody on all levels. Even though this is also about sex, this house, it really is about the deepest recesses of you know your being and even your psyche because it rules psychology as well um the 12th house th th though does too so that's um your natural house of pisces it's kind of funny but in any case um you do have new beginnings in this area 
uh, death can be a transformation. If somebody has died, that may kind of, I was even thinking about that, that that may transform your life in some way. Um, it could be somebody that you loved, but it could be somebody that was difficult in your life. And now, let's say you were married to somebody that was difficult and they've passed away. Maybe now you're going to feel a sense of freedom. That sounds terrible to say, doesn't it? But it's really not. You know, it really isn't because Pisces, you are such a long-suffering sign. And I could, you know, see some of you being involved in marriages where you're doing a lot of the nurturing and you're not getting back what you have given. And yet you, you know, continue to do it because you're really a compassionate person. You try to give love to people who are unlovable, really. Well, I shouldn't say that they're unlovable, but they don't think that they're lovable, so they act in unlovable ways. And you can see through all that. And that's beautiful. It, it, it You know, it's it's really beautiful, but sometimes you do suffer if, if this is true for you. And you may, um, you know, have your ships come, ship come in in some way regarding death, you know, and it may be due to inheritance or if it was your spouse, you know, the, the, the will, you know, as a, yeah, that would be an inheritance too. But, you know, whatever happens, it's going to be on a very deep level for, for you the next year with Jupiter there. It's not some kind of a, a shallow um, influence. And Jupiter is such a big energy that it really will, I feel it's going to influence you greatly. You do have Neptune in your own sign and and Chiron as well. So there's a that there's a lot of this watery um element um you know influencing you even though Jupiter is actually in Libra, but because it's in the 8th house, it has like a sub Scorpio influence for you specifically. I don't know if that made any sense, but anyway, maybe that was too inside baseball. Um anyway, Mercury turned direct the other day in your seventh house of romance. And so this may have been really, well, I'm sorry, I don't mean romance. I mean committed partnership, you know. Um, so th that would be like if you were married or, you know, in a live-in situation, anything that you're like in a monogamous relationship. Mercury turned direct, which means that some of you had some kind of a communication breakdown when it was in retrograde motion. Maybe some of you were thinking about getting a divorce. And um, let me see here. It's interesting because uh, Jupiter was previously in that seventh house. And that should have provided some of you um, with a committed relationship if you were just on a dating level, okay? But that doesn't mean that even if you do get into a, a marriage or, or the equivalent, that you don't have problems after that fact, obviously. As anybody who has been in a long-term relationship knows that there sometimes are peaks and valleys, you know? Uh, hopefully the valleys aren't too deep, but if you were um, not on speaking terms, you may start to see resolution in this area. Uh, maybe you were like, maybe there was some kind of um, snafu with you being able to get married. Maybe your marriage license, um, you know, didn't uh, come through. I, I don't, I've never been married, so I don't know how that works. But anything related to that seventh house may have been affected. It could have been clients that you had that somehow there was um, delays or miscommunication. Uh, now it, it will kind of like calm down. It will totally be out of its shadow after the 7th of October. So, you know, always keep an eye out until then for maybe like minor disturbances. But for the most part, it should be okay. Uh, but I was just mainly saying for those people that had a falling out maybe with somebody that you uh, are in a long-term relationship with that you may start to sort things out. It may have been a misunderstanding, let's put it that way, and it blew up into something more than it should have been. Okay, so, and then we have Venus going into Scorpio, a fellow water sign, 
in your ninth house. It already has actually as of this recording. So it's now in your ninth house. So this can um, be very helpful. Venus brings money sometimes uh, to whatever house it transits. So for this, it would be regarding, you know, pursuit of higher education or even like it doesn't have to be at a university. If you were wanting, let's say, to take some sort of spiritual training course, maybe the money will just appear. You'll be gifted the money from some source or for travel, if that's something that you have been wanting to do. Now, this is what I say because I'm anticipating some people saying, well, there's nobody that can give me any money. This isn't going to happen. Um, what they say in Law of Attraction is, how it happens is none of my business. All I have to do is like, it's like ordering from a menu. You know what? I want to travel. So I'm leaving it up to the universe to provide me the money so that I can travel. And then um, see if it happens. In other words, not trying to, to, to just beat the, you know, you know what out of life um, by trying to impose your will on life, slaving away, saving a little bit here and there, but saying, this is what I want to do, and I want to do it effortlessly, and I'm going to make this happen. And believing that it's even possible that somebody could gift you money out of nowhere so that you could take this spiritual course that you've always wanted to take. You know, it happened to me. I didn't even like consciously think that somebody could give me something and it wasn't anything to do with this transit, but I received um, what I would call an extra, maybe like a large tip and that helped me to take a spiritual course that I had wanted to take. Okay, now I had, I didn't dream of this even happening, but I took advantage of it when it did and it kind of like made me aware that these things are even possible. And the greatest thing that I've learned about the law of attraction or from it is that there are like unlimited ways that money can flow to you, including by your own ideas. So, um, you know, never believe that there are only a set number of ways that you can have money and, you know, other things that you need flow to you. You would be surprised to find that out. And um, so if that's something that you've been wanting to do, just uh, put your order in to the universe and see what happens. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there, Pisces. I wish you all the best for the rest of uh, September. Take care. Bye.